Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Morning, Mrs. G. Good to see you guys. All right, this is uh, one of those things we do every once in a while, isn't it? Uh, oh God. <sighs> yes, periodic trends. Every once in a while we do these periodic trends. Am I to assume then from the term periodic that we are going to use the periodic table to determine trends? Yeah, I think so. I can't imagine what else. Well, do you have your periodic table? I do. All right. I always have a periodic table handy. Here's mine right here. Oh, God, you would have one of those. <laughs> All right. So periodic trends are properties that are predictable based on their position on periodic table. The periodic table. Makes so, sense. So they're properties that are predictable based on the element's position on the periodic table. All right. All right. Uh, they're affected by a few things. If one, they're affected by the number of energy levels that an atom has. Yeah, because the energy levels go one through seven. Right. So basically, you're thinking about how many concentric, how many clouds yeah. are around it. Or orbitals. All right. Nuclear charge, so the number of protons in each element. All right. Electron shielding. Which is the amount of electrons in between the nucleus and the outermost electrons. The valence electrons, so right. the core electrons. Right, the core electrons, yeah. Okay. Electron shielding you know, are the core electrons, the electrons inside. All right. And uh, also electron to electron repulsion. Yeah, because they're equally charged, they're not equally, uh, they're the same charge, so they would repel each other. And electrons are repelled by each other, they're repulsive. Yep. So the very first trend we are going to talk about is a trend called ionization energy. What do you think that is, Mrs. G? Well, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but I'll tell you one thing. I don't write that all out. I write IE for short. And ionization energy is the amount of energy it takes to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. Ooh. So the trend is that the ionization energy increases from left to right. Yeah, so it gets tougher to take away an electron as you go from the left side of the periodic table to the more right. energy. Okay. So if I'm in the f if I'm in the second group, lithium's easier to take an electron away from than beryllium. It takes more energy to get beryllium's valence electron away from it than it does to take lithium's ele valence electron away from it. Correct. And the hardest one in that period would be neon. You you would have the hardest time taking neon's yeah. electrons away. You that's a noble gas. Noble gases don't are relatively inert. They don't like to gain or lose. But if you got enough energy, I suppose you could do it. All right, so from left to right, that seems to make sense. The fewer electrons, the easier they give them up. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense, because that's something that we've talked about before. Decreases from top to bottom. So if I'm talking about group one there, between lithium and francium, it decreases as I go down. So it's easier to take an electron away from francium. Correct. Don't forget they, have the both, they both have the same number of valence electrons. One. But francium has 86 core electrons hiding that one, or shielding that one valence electron. Okay, so those the, those electrons in the core are actually shielding the outside electron in francium. Yep. Whereas lithium has it two, has core, two electrons. core electrons. two core electrons, yeah, that's not a lot of shielding. All right, ooh, here is, all right. Ooh, here is a, uh, a graph of it. So uh, we could write in here that this element would be hydrogen and helium. We got lithium, lithium and beryllium. beryllium. Boron is a little anomaly. Boron's a little exception to the rule because it goes down a bit. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and that's an exception to the rule, goes down. Fluorine and neon. Well, the whole point, this, this, isn't, this isn't perfect. This is a trend, right, Mrs. G? Yeah, it's a trend. And that boron oxygen, you know what that's got to do with? It's got to do with partnering up for the first time electrons. There are anomalies all over the place, so. But but the trend is it goes it up. If I if I just look at this graph, the yep. trend is the graph is increasing. It increases. Yep. And then here's the th here's the group that starts with sodium, sodium and it ends with argon. Argon. So the trend here is that we're just going up. Yep. And okay. if you notice the anomalies or the strange oddities are in the exact same place as they are in the first boron oxygen. Now with successive ionization energies yeah. We're talking about the same atom, right? Right, same atom, just uh, the, before we were talking about the first electron. Now we're talking about taking away the second or the right. third electron from right. it. Um, after the first electron is removed, the nucleus grips the remaining electrons stronger. Okay. It doesn't have as many to pull in, so it can actually pull them in even tighter. Yep. Uh, therefore, it gets harder to remove each one because they're closer. So each successive ionization energy will be a larger number. Correct. Yeah. 
Uh, and here's, here's an example for magnesium. The first ionization energy uh, for the first electron is 736 kilojoules. Uh, it turns out that the second ionization energy is 1,445. So it increased, and magnesium has two valence electrons. Right, and it's, it's reasonably easy to take away the first two if you look. But yeah. the third one, that's a core electron. That's almost an increase of sevenfold. That's yeah. huge. That's, that's a huge increase. Oh, so the minute you start digging into the core... They start getting really yeah, difficult to do. it's a big jump. So you sure. could actually determine the atom, or at least the family of the atom, based on ionization energies. Mm -hmm. Whichever mm -hmm. one gives you the greatest leap, that's the last valence electron and the next, the very first core electron. Right. Ah. Okay, atomic radius. So the atomic radius is uh, very similar to the radius of a circle, right? Because atoms are kind of like circles. Yeah, but it's measured differently because we we give them a defined edge. There's really no defined edge on an atom. Yeah, that and we that we can't really measure. Yeah, we can't right. define that edge, no so it's difficult. Edge. So instead of measuring from the center of an atom to the edge of the atom, we measure from the nucleus of one atom to the nucleus of another that's the same. And cut it in half. And cut it in half, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That Because we can't see the edge of an atom yeah. because of the electron cloud. So there, there's the picture of it. Yeah. So we take two atoms, we measure from nucleus to nucleus, and we divide by two. Right. We call that the radius. Like nucleuses, I might add. Don't forget this is a sample of the same stuff. Right, it's sample A and sample A, atom A and atom yeah. A. All right, so atomic radius decreases from left of the periodic table to right, so decreases across the period. And that doesn't make the sort of sense that I'd think it would. No, because you're putting on more protons, more electrons. Oh, you're putting on more protons, more electrons. Larger positive, larger negative, tighter grip. Okay. Oh, right. okay. That nucleus is getting bigger, so it's, it's able to hold on to those electrons a little bit tighter. And since protons, they're usually larger than electrons, right? And then as we go from the top of a group to the bottom of a group, it's going to increase. Which makes, that one makes really good sense. Yeah, because you're, you're adding more energy levels, more yeah. orbitals, more, Further more, away. more electron clouds. All right, so it's just the first one going across you might have to think about for a little while. Let's start with lithium. And then beryllium. And then beryllium. Boron. Then boron. Carbon. Carbon. Nitrogen. Oxygen. Fluorine. And neon. So neon's the smallest in that period. Going across, yep. So I know I'm in a new period because suddenly it gets larger. Yeah. Because we added another energy, energy level. level. Okay. Sodium. So sodium has a third energy level, and that's why it gets bigger. Yep. Magnesium. Aluminum. I said that wrong. Aluminum. All right. Silicon. Phosphorus. Sulfur. Chlorine. And argon. And after argon, I've gotten to the smallest in the group, so I know that I must be going to the fourth energy level yep. with potassium. potassium yeah. All right, we won't worry about doing any more of these, but I get the idea. The tr but I get the idea. The trend is to go down in each group as you go down as you go across the group. I have such an affinity for this class. <laughs> Electron affinity, the uh. energy change that occurs when an electron is acquired by a neutral atom. Okay, so a couple of things that hits my mind. Thing number one, this is kind of the opposite of ionization energy, correct? Ionization energy was the loss of, this is the gain of. This is the gain of, yeah, so this is the uh, almost the exact opposite. All right, and this is a standalone atom, correct? Standalone, it's all by itself, yeah. So the affinity of a standalone atom to gain an electron. Correct. I would imagine the right-hand side of the periodic table has a larger electron affinity because they're supposed to gain electrons. Right, they want to. They tend, yeah. they tend to want to because they have lots more and they don't want to lose all of them. All right, so um, uh, electron affinity, you, you're right, Mrs. G. Uh, if you look at the arrow in the picture here, electron affinity does increase as you go across. Yep. It's uh, the amount of energy increases. Now the other thing, um, the other part of the trend is the up and down part of the trend it turns out that uh, it's easier it's easier for a atom at the top of the group to gain an electron. Oh well, yeah, they're smaller and it gets in close, so exactly. less energy is released. Exactly. So uh, b because of the positive uh, nucleus, because of that nuclear charge, 
it's going to be able to suck in an electron a lot easier yeah, than so something get, down near the bottom. Got to get nice and close, lots of energy released, very little energy retained. Okay, that makes sense. Now, if you actually take time and you look at this, uh, you look at this table here and you analyze it, there are a lot of exceptions. Remember, guys, this is just trends. So, as you go across, you get an increase. As you go up, it you got an increase. Okay. Wait, didn't we just do electron? Oh, this is electronegativity. Yeah, electronegativity, a little bit different. Okay. Um, and I think this might be the last one. Ooh, cool. All right. So electronegativity is the measure of the ability of an atom to attract electrons when in a compound. Okay. So that's how this is different from the last one. The last yeah. one was single Stand atoms. Standalone atoms. This is when you're in a compound. All right. Okay. Uh, the trend is you're going to increase as you go from left to right. So an atom's going to be able to attract electrons better. And that makes sense, right? Yep. And you're going to decrease from top to bottom. Or another way to say that is the same way as we said on the last slide. You're going to increase as you go from bottom to top. It's easier for smaller atoms to pull in electrons. Well, electronegativity is completely different than electron affinity, but it has the same trend, doesn't it? Increases right. across, decreases down. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. And we can see here. That's as we go across. Starting at lithium. We got lithium. Beryllium. Beryllium. Boron. Boron. Carbon. Carbon. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Oxygen. Oxygen. Fluorine. Fluorine. And fluorine has no equal. Fluorine is the largest electronegativity on this whole chart. Yep. Yeah. Nobody beats fluorine out. Nobody ever. Ever? Ever. Anywhere on the periodic table? Nowhere on the periodic table. Fluorine is it. So it increases as you go right and up, and there's nothing really above fluorine. Nope. So yeah, because helium is uh, not going to... It's not going to attract electrons. Noble gas. Back. Sodium? Magnesium? Aluminum? Silicon? Phosphorus? Sulfur? Chlorine? Okay. And they don't even bother putting the noble gases because no, the noble gases... They don't, uh, they don't really attract electrons. They don't tend to form compounds. The neon argon, yeah. It's way too hard to make them form compounds, yeah. so we don't put them on here. Okay.